Well, thank you everyone for joining us today um, and obviously welcome to today's presentation. My name is Kate and I'm from the East Suffolk Economic Development Team and I'm joined today by some of my colleagues who I'll let them introduce themselves. So, Nicole, do you want to kick off? Thanks, Kate. My name is Nicole Rickard and I'm Head of Communities at East Suffolk Council. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kevin Wegg and I'm a Funding Officer. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name's Joe McCallum and I'm part of the Economic Development Team as Town Development Coordinator. Hello, I'm Alice Wade. I'm Head of VC FSC Organisation Development at Community Action Suffolk. I'm Ada Magalhães. Uh, I'm a Business Support Officer at Community Action Suffolk. Lovely, thank you everyone. So they will they will be your presenters as we go through today. Um, obviously, we're here to talk to you today about the Rural England Prosperity Fund and a particular focus on the Rural Business and Community Hub Fund that East Suffolk Council is currently administrating. Um, I will just say, if you've got any questions as we go throughout today's presentation, there should be a Q&A function or a chat function, so if you can add them as we go through and we'll try our best to get through as many as we can at the end. And you should be also be able to raise your hand, but if you can do that at the end, if you want to to ask a direct question that would be fantastic um so just really quickly about the fund so back in september 22 the government launched this new rural england prosperity fund or ref as we call for short um, and the aim of it was to improve productivity and strengthen the local rural economy and our local rural communities as well um, and if you are interested in seeing how we're spending kind of our wider allocation you can just search east suffolk rural prosperity in your search engine and you'll find the right web page um, but Nicole shortly is going to talk through to you kind of the vision of this grant scheme and what we're actually looking to fund. But as a really quick overview, this is a capital grant scheme with grants 15 to 30 thousand pound per application. And obviously it's this rare opportunity to develop multifunctional and multi-purpose hubs for our local rural communities, which is based around community need. Um, so it might be offering a high quality service range, activities, events, and looking at different kinds of sustainable um, income streams as well. As I said, it is capital only, so for example, that might be equipment, and I must say we cannot fund any sort of purchase of properties. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Nicole now to talk about kind of examples of projects we're looking to fund and what we really mean by a holistic and multifunctional space. Nicole, over to you. Thank you. So I'm going to start with, uh, I guess, the overriding vision. And I think the key message that I'd like to get across is just to say, think, think big. So um, this is a rare opportunity to access funding um, at the, the sort of level that, that, that is available. It's something that we've had lots of feedback from communities over the years um, about wanting access to some funding to make some significant changes to their community hub. So, so I guess it's um it, it's about it is about thinking big it's about thinking about what else you could do um in your community to meet the needs of the community thanks Kay and um and and, and in terms of what I mean by that um it's about um being ambitious it's about being forward thinking um it's about thinking about how um, our hubs could work harder, I guess. It's about how we can kind of um, maximise the, the, the groups and um, activities that take place in our rural communities. It is, it is targeted, as Kay said, at rural communities, um, which again is rare. You're not competing against some of the bigger communities for, for funding. Um, there's a range of groups that can apply um, and there is um, up to 80% funding, which, as I said, is very, um, very rare. And actually, 10% of the 20% match funding can be in volunteer time. So effectively, it's 90% um, funding. Um, but it's about meeting the needs of the whole community. So this isn't a fund that was set up to um, do maintenance projects on existing community buildings. It's about a bit more than that or a lot more than that, actually. And ideally, we'd like people to think about a range of things that they could do. So not necessarily just thinking narrowly about what the opportunities are, but thinking more widely about multiple things that you could do for your um, community hub that would meet a range of needs and ideally do that in an energy efficient and digitally connected building. Thanks, Kay. So 
I, th I thought it might be useful to pose some questions just to get you you thinking um, about what you could do, what you might want to do. And, you know, and I'm sure a number of you have got some um, needs in mind, but but there is something about un unmet needs. So so what unmet needs are there in your community? Are there are there people in your community that might use the hub if you changed it and made it more accessible to them? And then thinking about how your building might need to be adapted to meet the needs that you've identified. So just to kind of explain that a bit more, it could be changes to the building layout um, or access to the building and thinking about whether that could meet the needs of specific groups within the community. So, for example, young people, um, is there space in, in your community building for young people to, to get together, to, to socialise, um, to do particular activities, to, to get online? Or it could be making it more accessible to residents with disabilities and accessibility is a key theme of the programme. It's also thinking about whether there could be more um, offered in terms of services. So it could be, I've put a couple of examples there and I'm not, I'm not suggesting that either of those are, are looking to do outreach everywhere, but certainly they are organisations that are doing outreach into our communities. So Citizens Advice and Turning Point, you know, is there an outreach opportunity? But obviously for something like Citizens Advice, they need a um, a room where they can talk to people confidentially as do Turning Point. So that might be something to think about, but it could be fitness classes, it could be um, support groups like dementia support groups or carers support groups um, that, that, that might want to use the, the facility. Another dimension is those very current uh, who are struggling with the cost of living. So we've got a number of communities who've set up community pantries or community fridges. But actually, if you if your space is one big hall, you might not be able to do that because, for example, for a community pantry that has to stay set up all of the time. It's almost like a mini shop um, and therefore there might need to be some physical changes to the building to enable that to happen. Obviously, a, com a, com a community fridge is, is much takes up much less space. But again, you potentially would need to identify an area where it's accessible. You've got the right um, energy connections, etc. There's something there's also an emphasis on making the building more energy efficient and sustainable, which obviously would make it cheaper to run but it would also make it a warmer, more attractive space to be. So you might be interested in providing a, a warm welcome space, but actually the, the, the building isn't very warm or very welcoming at the moment. Um, there could be opportunities to provide um, skills development. So that could be a whole range of things. I've just put a couple of examples there. So so cooking classes. So if there's a kitchen, kitchen in the hall, um, does that potentially need improving to enable you to provide cooking classes, for, an, for example, to help um, people that are struggling financially to cook better meals, more nutritious meals on a budget or digital skills groups? And then the final example is just could could businesses, small businesses um, or home workers use the building as a co-working space? So there could be opportunities to bring people together who potentially are working at home. Thanks, Kay. So this is just a visual representation of some of that, and I've tried to pull out some of the things that you could potentially um, do. Um, a very um, very quaint village hall shown in the picture, but just some examples. So you could put solar panels on the roof. You could put better insulation in the roof. Could be an, an EV charging point at the front of the hall. You could put in a soundproof room dividing system to enable two activities to be held at once. So if you've got two smaller groups who want to use the space who are competing for the room booking, you know, is there a way of dividing that room to, to, to mean that, that that you could actually squeeze as much use as possible out of the facility. Could be computer desks and chairs to create a co-working area for, for um, home workers. And you can see that fits with um, the one top left, which is faster broadband and a set of laptops for digital skills training. Could even think about a small extension to put in place a community pantry or uniform bank uh, or and or replacement doors and windows or a combination of those things to meet a range of needs. Thanks, Kay. 
So I hand over to Joe now, but hopefully that gives you some idea of the ambitions that we'd like you to have when you're thinking about this project. You might have a, a much longer um, list of things that you might want to do that total a lot more than the money is available. And potentially we can help with that. We could potentially help with funding that would um, match with this scheme and enable you to do more. But I'd advise you to, to set your sights high and think about what you might want your communities to look like in 10 or 20 years time. Thank you. I'll hand over to Joe now. Thank you, Nicole. Um, as most of you who have um, applied for funding probably previously, one of the key things is ensuring this strong evidence of need to um, to support your fu your funding application. Um, for example, you you might want to demonstrate how the funding will help you compete with your competition um, by by attracting additional users to the, your hub and how it will meet the needs, as, as Nicole has already alluded to, um, of your customers and your community. You will need to consider how you'll evidence the need for what you are applying for, and that evidence base needs to be very strong. Examples could include, as, as we've suggested here, something like a neighbourhood or parish plan, local data sets. We would also suggest that you speak to local voluntary and community sector hubs that already exist, such as in Southwold, for example. I know there's the voluntary um, support centre there to see what they know, where the gaps are, because quite often Often that information is there in the community and additional to that additionally to that is to ensure that there isn't duplication you might be looking to um, provide something that either already exists or somebody else who's already got the same idea so to ensure that everything is very clear in your application um, CAS will provide, or Community Action Suffolk who are here today, they will provide support and information on that. So please do utilise that support that's available to you. But it's just to reiterate that evidence of need needs to be very strong within your application. Thank you, Kay. Thanks, Jo. Um, so priorities of fund. This is going to be quite a quick slide. Essentially, within your application form, you do need to say how you're meeting at least one of the three priorities of the fund you can see on your screen. So digital upgrades, capital improvements, create suitable space for community and business use and net zero upgrades. Um, but obviously, as Nicole's been saying, it is about taking that holistic approach and meeting hopefully more than one of those priorities. So we're looking ideally at probably two or three of those will be met within your application and um, so it's not just standalone improvements um, and you will note on that slide it does say that there is a priority for applications um, to consider both community and business use so if, for example it could even be a community pop-up shop once a week about bringing that additional income in and building that long-term sustainability. Um, right over to Kevin. Thank you, Kay. So this is a summary of things that we cannot um, sadly fund. I won't actually run through uh, all of them there because these are in our guidance. So all I would say is, you know, do please carefully check the list before you include any of these uh, within your application. We've already touched on the one at the bottom because uh, we did have quite a few applications actually last time that simply focused on uh, a single repair um, to a property, albeit of course I'm sure those repairs uh, are very much needed, but you do need to um, consider a wider set of uh, plans and ambitions as uh, Nicole has alluded to. So do, as I say, do check that list uh, there. If you have any doubts, of course, you know, please do use uh, CAS who are very much uh, here to uh, help and uh, help you with your application. So uh, do check out that list. Thank you, Kay. And just to continue on that list, uh, if you have received funding uh, before from uh, other DEFRA schemes, then sadly uh, you cannot apply for this fund. And that includes the uh, Platinum Jubilee Village Hall Improvement Grant Fund, which is quite a mouthful, as you can see on the screen there. Thank you, Kay. OK, and uh, also to uh, sadly, there are some areas that are excluded. This is a DEFRA requirement. It's not uh, one that we've um, uh, 
uh, introduced. So you do need to make sure that you are in an area that can apply for the funding. So you'll see the uh, names of the areas uh, there. If you are on the, the border of any of these uh, areas, then again, please do uh, check. Uh, you can email us uh, at East Suffolk Council and we will check. We have access to an online tool and we can check your postcode. Uh, to make sure that you are eligible. So again, don't go through all the work of applying. Um, make sure that you do check, first of all, that you are in an eligible area. Thank you, Kay. And we've touched on this again, but uh, just to be clear, we talk about an intervention uh, rate. And uh, what that means is, is that you can apply for uh, up to 80% of the total eligible expenditure of a project. So as uh, uh, Nicole has alluded to, that's a really quite a large uh, sum, but please do make sure you check that calculation because we did have one or two applications come through again that were applying for, for more than 80%. Uh, so please do check that. And uh, as I say, that is a good opportunity to really create and uh, receive a large portion of your project costs. Thank you, Kay. And now I'm handing over to uh, one of my colleagues, I do believe. Yeah, so um, in addition to the capital funding that's available, um, East Suffolk Council through the um, East Suffolk Community Partnership Board has got provided a small amount of revenue funding. So that, this is for if you need a bit of revenue funding to get your um, projects off the off the track so so for example it could be a bit of project management support for the project um, there's a there's a box on the form that asks you if you need that revenue funding and if you answer yes you'll need to set out similarly um, you know to the rest of the application so how much how much funding you need no surprise there what you're going to use it for uh, why you can't meet those costs so so that isn't for us to kind of replace existing funding that you've got it's for additional funding to deliver this particular project and again evidence of need for that particular element and the revenue grant, grant requests are up to a maximum of seven and a half thousand so on top of the 80 percent of your project costs that Kevin's just talked about that capital funding you could apply for up to seven and a half thousand pounds of revenue costs and revenue just just to clarify is for non-lasting assets so um, so you might be using the capital funding to buy solar panels or improve the um, broadband access to the hall or to do some capital works to 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 build an extension or subdivide a room uh, revenue funding is for non-lasting assets so things like digital platforms consultancy or project management costs but just something to worth but to bear in mind, because we appreciate that some applicants might struggle with the capacity to actually make the project happen, and we didn't want that to be a barrier. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Um, so I'm going to go over these quite quickly as well. These are more the kind of the detail of the grant scheme. Um, so quotations for works and services, you will note when you go through the grant guidance that you do have to ensure that for any capital expenditures so physical assets and services that you're buying in, um, for anything over £5,000, you do need to ensure that you've got at least three written quotes. And that's just to ensure value for money, particularly um, when we're spending kind of the public pound and anything over one over 75,000 on one item does require a formal tender process but I think that's fairly um, unlikely to happen on most applications but if that is the case if you are looking at large projects what we actually mean by that is that it's essentially being advertised publicly somewhere you've received quotations and you've looked at them and awarded a contract debt on a kind of an equal basis and if you need any more support with that please also do get in contact with us and we can advise further um, and you will have to upload your quotations with your application form in fact it shouldn't let you um, submit the e-form without those so just have that in mind when you're thinking about um, doing your application form and I should say if you can say there is only one provider but you need to provide a clear reason as to why so it might there are cases where there's only one suitable supplier that is fine as long as you are very clear about that in your application um planning permission very briefly obviously because this is a capital scheme if you think you might need 
um, planning permission before applying or in order to carry out the works you're looking at, please make sure you contact our planning team to um, get some pre-app advice and see if you do require planning permission or not. Um, and we do check that and ask that in your application. And if we award you the funding and you're still waiting for planning permission that's needed, it will be on a conditional basis until that's approved. And obviously, if you just need any other licenses, please make sure you've looked at that and considered it before applying. So, for example, if you are setting up a cafe within your building, it might be that you need to speak to our food safety team as well. And lastly, just on that slide to note that if you are looking at a project on rented, lease or tenanted land, um, you will need a letter of authority from the building owner as well, or the premises owner, um, or the actual owner applies on your behalf. So how to apply, there is an online e-form, so you will get these slides post event um, that you can apply for. However, it is now a condition as part of the grant scheme that you've spoken to Community Action Suffolk before you apply to make sure your project is eligible and meets the criteria of the grant scheme. So I'm actually going to hand over to CAS now to talk through their support offer and how they can help you with your application. Thanks, Kay. Um, so many of the challenges that have come through round one so far, including articulating the need, ambition and taking a holistic view, very much remind me of when I was a fundraiser and I was applying to Arts Council England for a capital grant. Now, Arts Council England support arts activities for public benefits, and that's what they were really interested in, rather than lots of detail about the capital works themselves. I uh, needed to explain how the capital works would act as a vehicle to enable me more people to access the arts, which, you know, sounds relatively simple, doesn't it? But it isn't. And it takes time to think through and think beyond your initial or your immediate capital needs, which might be losing heat through your windows. To get there, I strongly suggest you start with why. Why is your community building needed? What's its purpose? How do you meet that community need? Um, what community needs could you be supporting with some new improvements or new activities? So food poverty, loneliness, isolation, access to services. To help you with that, you might want to consider doing some community consultation or indeed revisiting your business plan so that you're really thinking long term and holistically across all of your operations. And that's something that Ada, who's going to speak in a minute, can help you with. Once you understand and importantly have evidence for your community need and you know how your organisation and community building can help with that, that's when you can start building your capital project. You can start looking around your building and identifying what improvements need to be made so that you can deliver those activities. Um, and that might be new activities, but it might also be about improving the experiences of those that are already engaging in your activities or a combination of the two. So, as Nicole said, think big, be ambitious, think holistically. Um, so, you know, for example, if rural isolation is the community need that you've identified and your immediate capital need is insulation, how do those two needs meet? And what more importantly, what more could you do uh, to help uh, overcome rural isolation by improving your facilities? An example of that might be that you look to reduce your costs by making even more uh, energy efficient uh, improvements to your building beyond that need for installation and use those savings then to plow into new activities. So that might be drop in sessions for uh, health visitors, for example. And alongside that, thinking about layering your activity, it might be that you do some digital improvements and upgrade your broadband so that people can access services online. In addition to that, as Nicole alluded to earlier, you might have a room which doesn't have much use at the moment, but if you divided it up, maybe you could enable more space to have those one to one drop in sessions. So the important thing here to remember is installation on its own really isn't going to cut it. It's not enough. So I encourage you and I encourage you to be really honest when you ask this question, you know, how strongly does your proposal meet the funds priorities? And remember what I said about my experience as a fundraiser. 
your your uh, application needs to articulate how your capital works are going to act as a vehicle to meet that community need that you've identified. I'm going to pass over to Ada, who's going to explain how we can help you with some of those challenges. Thanks, Kay. Hi, everyone. Um, so uh, the ESFIC team have talked about, about what they want to see in your application, um, and hopefully that will have answered some of your questions. But, you know, it's quite difficult to then, based on that, just build the perfect application. I think it's very likely you need some help, and that's probably why you're here. Um, so, um, and that's why I think also Suffolk, being aware of that uh, support that you need, uh, have partnered with with CAS uh, to provide that support to you, the pre-application support. Um, so I'll be your point of contact uh, for to answer your questions basically so you you kind of know what they want but you still have questions and um, i'll be your point of contact and the first of those questions will usually be am i eligible so kevin mentioned for example you know the area the most basic thing so um, you can uh, east Africa can check that for you but also i can do that uh, based on your postcode and see you know if you're um, in the correct area um according to DEFRA, uh, and then also um, so whether your organization is eligible, but also more importantly, whether your project is eligible. Um, so I think based on uh, our experience in round one, I think what you will have initially is usually you have one idea, you have an idea of what you want to do is in terms of capital work. Uh, but as Alice has said, uh, that's usually just the start really i think the the it has always all your your project has to be based on a need a community need so then that's where i think i can help you to kind of develop that initial idea and then take it further so think about basically building layers um so if your initial need is let's say installation using the same example than just building on that um, and more importantly uh, as uh, joe has said uh, finding evidence for it because i think that's a, a key thing that I, I think also again from learnings from round one is i think what uh, you might underestimate sometimes is just really uh, whatever you say in your application needs to be backed by evidence uh, by numbers and by evidence um, so that's where i can help you um, and I think some of you, I think this developing your your ideas might be enough. You will be all the support you need and then off you go and hopefully you'll build a good application. But then uh, you might need some more support in terms of, um, for example, help with your uh, your finances, uh, coming up with a, you know, a funding plan or forecasting. Um, so thinking more that in the long term uh, in terms of business planning. Um, so I can help you with that as well. And then um, if there's something I can't help you with because we're part of, you know, big infrastructure organizations that CAS is, uh, I can also sign post to one of my colleagues uh, and we have support, for example, uh, about uh, other sources of funding from uh, a financial sustainability officer, uh, but also pro help uh, that uh, provides, you know, pro bono support uh, to the VCFSC sector. Um, so there's different sources of, of help that is also available through CAS. Um, so hopefully we can work together there to get your basically develop your project get your vision across uh, and build a good applic application um, and i think it's one last thing i would like to mention is that um i think think of me as basically i'm an enabler i'm i'm, I'm providing support to you um there's a lot of work to be done and i think one thing that's very important to to remember is that one person um writing an application or working on an application it's probably not, it's a lot of work because, you know, there's a lot, you know, finding out, finding evidence of need. There's all these different elements that I think if one person is doing is quite a lot, even with my support. So bear in mind that you will need some more involvement from, you know, your committee and your volunteers. Um, otherwise, it's, it's um, and, and, you, and I would say you can probably tell if it's just one person working on something because uh, you need that community voice behind it, uh, kind of. So, yeah, that's what I would say. Uh, so yes, I don't know who I'm passing over to, but <laughs> it's me. <There> you <laughs> Thank go. you for that. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think this this next slide uh, we've called it uh, top tips, and I think the point I want to emphasise before I start is that we're all here to support you, and we want to see you uh, succeed and put in good applications. So uh, 
I'm sure much of what you've heard perhaps um, isn't anything new and we're not teaching you how to um, suck eggs far from it at all but we do want you to put the considerable effort and time that you put into these to be as successful as as possible so these are all designed to try to underpin that and there's nothing worse than uh, putting an application in doing all that effort and then perhaps you know being unsuccessful so we're here to try and uh, make sure that you put in the best possible application so many of these really are a repeat of what you've already heard but it's 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 kind of worth repeating them uh, again and I always think of a funding application as as being like a uh, filling in a job application form. You know, you you really do need to go through it carefully, answer everything that's been requested and give yourself the best chance of getting that job or in this case, the best chance of getting the funding. So the number one, uh, please do read the guidance from start to finish. <laughs> I never forget being at uh, at school once and um, being told that and uh, the first line of the exam paper said uh, make sure you read from start to finish before answering any questions me being me I didn't I just plowed straight in and um, got to the end and it said uh, the last point was um, don't answer any questions just put your hand up and say finished. So had I done that, I wouldn't have had to have answer uh, any of the questions. So a little bit of a silly example, but just making the point that please do read the guidance from start to finish and make sure that you really are, are eligible and uh, can actually meet the needs. So for example, in the last round, we had, I think it was three applications that were bidding for funding well below the 15,000 minimum. So they've gone to all that effort and didn't get funding. So it sounds obvious, but please do check the guidance. Again, point number two, we've heard about this. Um, you know, it really must offer community benefit, uh, you know, be open to all uh, and not a, a membership uh, only, only scheme. So do think very carefully about that, what difference it will make and, and how also you will measure the success of your project or service uh, at the end and, and Hayda can certainly help you develop that. Now number three costs. Um, this is one where I find that sometimes applications do again fall down where you obviously must be able to break down your project costs and, and justify each of those costs and explain how you've got to the figures that you have and also it must demonstrate value for money. So again, you might be quite surprised how many come through that haven't been through CAS, I'm sure, uh, where they don't actually add up or they don't actually make sense. So just remember that we don't know your project inside out like you do. So you have to make sure that we, and in particular the panel who made the decision, they need to know how you've got to the figures that you have. Okay. Number four, please do be realistic. Uh, again, in round one, we had some very interesting <laughs> outputs suggested, which, to be honest, really, there was no way that those outputs could be met from the funding application that had been put in. Now, yes, you want to um, shine the best light on your application, but don't put in numbers that really you've got very little chance of actually delivering please be realistic because the panel, when they consider your application, they will look at those numbers that you've put down and, and they will know whether or not they are achievable. And you will get far more credit if you um, perhaps aim lower, but aim realistically. And at the end of the day, we will ask you for a monitoring return once your funding has been used. And we'll be looking for you to demonstrate to us in that monitoring return that you have met or come very close to meeting those outputs that you've claimed. So please do um, be positive, but be, be realistic. And finally, number five, um, don't just take a punt with a funding application. If you are unsure of the question or you're struggling to find an answer, that really is where CAS can help you uh, enormously because it might be that CAS work with you and perhaps 
they might not necessarily think that your application really um, meets the needs or, or, or can deliver uh, what it's claiming. So you could turn around and still apply, of course, but really you, you need to make sure that you really can meet the broad aims and priorities of the scheme. Um, and there's a well-known TV programme called Location, Location, Location. I've pinched that and I'm calling it evidence, evidence, evidence. You must be able to do that in your application. Otherwise, your efforts could be in vain. Other than that, I wish you every success. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Kevin. Um, right, so when can you actually apply? When is the deadline for applications? The next round opens on the 4th of December, so in just over a week or so, um, and runs the 26th of January 2024. So plenty of time for the next round, but please do not rush application, as Kevin has said, because there are future rounds in the next financial year, so in 24, 25. In fact, there's three of them. So what I will say is, when you get the slides and you actually look at the deadline for applications and the different rounds, just please don't think you need to get it in immediately. Make sure your application is really strong and get it into the one that will best suit you. And I think, Kev, we're back over to you for um, match funding opportunities as well. And then we are almost at the end. OK, sorry to take up too much of your time, but um, yes, there are other avenues uh, for you as well, other than this particular fund. So I've just summarised uh, a few there, some of which you may have already seen or or, or tried. Uh, I would uh, emphasise the uh, the free uh, funding search engine, which again, uh, through our, our colleagues, uh, CAS. So you can sign up for that and then you can search a whole plethora of uh, funding opportunities and you might find something that is um, applicable for you there. So do do check that out. Um, again, my colleagues in the uh, warm home teams, um, it says warm homes, but um, don't be put off by that. They can provide advice regarding communal buildings and, and possible support. So uh, if uh, insulation is a particular issue for you, then uh, again, they might be able to support and help you. So do uh, you know check that out as well. And then uh, if your uh, scheme needs help with um, uh, environmental type um, assistance, then there are several examples there and these are all links that you can click on to. So again, it's worth uh, checking those out. Thank you, Kay. Slide two, uh, the supermarkets. Um, most of them have a community uh, based funding schemes. There's lots there, as you can see. So again, always worth having uh, a look at those websites, which you can see there are the links. Thank you, Kay. And finally, the third uh, slide. Again, these are a, a cross section of different types of uh, funders. Uh, Screwfix, again, they are uh, helpful for repairing uh, buildings if that's uh, the need you have. B&Q, uh, again, and then there are other funders out there. But again, a, a number of those you would have found had you gone through the um, uh, the funding for Suffolk uh, search engine as well. So do do have a wider look to see what funds might be able to help you. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so just really quickly, if you are a registered business or even a CIC or a CIO, just to make you aware that you can also access support um, for any kind of business needs, support needs um, through the New Anglia Growth Hub, which is something East Suffolk Council partly funds. And essentially they provide a range of direct business advice, whether that's different types of funding, uh, grants, finance, marketing, branding, digital, etc. Um, so they can kind of look at your wider business as well. Um, and that is for a direct local business advisor, specifically for our district. And you can give them a call on the number provided or email them just so you are aware. Um, so we have reached the end, so thank you very much. Um, what we will do is if you can add any questions you've got into the Q&A um, and we will run through them. I know we did have one, so we'll start there. Or also if any of the presenters have thought of any questions as we went through, then please feel free to ask as well. Um, so the first one is whether we can fund um, equipment for new community hubs of fixtures and fittings that's probably a question for you kev okay thank you for that um so i think the important thing to remember really is to go back to 
what Nicole was articulating. So it, it's about looking um, holistically and it's again uh, colleagues with, with Cass, what they um, mentioned, it's, it's about um, yes, you can think about fitting out your uh, your building, but also to, you know, what need is that going to address? What additional need can it, it support? So you need to be able to evidence that you what you mustn't do is just focus on the actual uh, repair or, or equipment. It's about evidencing that that wider support that you can um, provide. Thank you, Kevin. I can't see more questions at the moment, so if anyone wants to type any of them, please feel free. Um, but I don't know if the presenters have anything else to add, just lastly. Um, I was just I was just going to add Kay actually and just a thought. Um, so we we did have a number of applications in the first round and some of them were um were 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 close to meeting the mark and potentially um we're we're working with them now. So so I suppose it was just if you if you do I I you know, please, please talk to Kaz as early as possible. Aid is there to help and advise you. And that's why we've 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 worked as as he said, partnered to provide that support. So please do have that conversation. And I think that will, you know, that will give you a much better chance of success. But if you aren't successful, we will consider resubmissions as long as there, there's some substantial changes have been made to make it more likely that it meets the, the, the criteria for the scheme. Nicole, um, just a question has come in. When you say size well B, is that just laced in or surrounding area impacted? Um, sorry, just to make that really clear, Laceton is included within this scheme. Um, it is just the specific area around the nuclear power station for understandable reasons um, to make that clear. But as Kev said when we went through a presentation, if you are at all confused whether you are eligible or not or fall within an excluded area, please drop us an email or CAS. Right. A uh, third question. So you mentioned working with businesses and sharing space. Is this essential where you work with vulnerable young people such safeguarding issues may arise? Nicole, that may be a question for you. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just I, I suppose one of the things we were thinking about when we set the scheme up and, and one of the things DEFRA would like us to do is um, is think about whether there are opportunities to combine community and business uses. But if that doesn't work in a particular project because of safeguarding issues or because of the groups that would be coming together in the hub, it's not a deal breaker. It's just something that we would we would encourage. So it's a it's a kind of ambition. Are there opportunities to think about those connections? We know the way people work has changed since COVID. There's a lot more people working in the, in in their homes. And um, the bit about businesses, you know, the hope people working from community hubs was just more about, you know, those we, we know that, that some of those people are quite isolated and lonely, feeling, you know, they are struggling with their mental health and well-being. And if there are opportunities to 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 link um, that business use in or, or skills development into your facility, then then great. But it won't work for every every example. So yeah, it's not a deal breaker. It's just something that we would encourage where it's relevant. Thank you. I can't see any more questions. One thing I have just thought of though, might be worth mentioning, is that in terms of your match funding, because we Kevin did go through um, potential uh, other grant opportunities that you can also apply for. I should say you can use other grants that you've been awarded or applying for as match funding and if you are obviously awarded our grant as well we would just make sure that you've got that um approved your other kind of grants you applied for approved and in place um so i think unless anyone's got anything else to say we'll wrap it up sorry kevin put your hand up yeah just one um other little tip really the online form that we use is is really good and we've actually um uh you know made a slight change to that to make it even better for, for for round two but what i would perhaps encourage you to do is is perhaps to um prepare your your answers offline so you save them into a document so that you've got them um and then you can copy and paste them 
onto the online form so that might then just in case you were to have a, a drop in the internet or whatever and you could lose your your hard work if you've um, created a, a word document and saved it you can then copy and paste it in so that might just be a useful tip to bear in mind thanks Kay thanks Kevin also I now get some more questions in uh, so next one did anyone get funded in round one and how much funding is left um yes so there was two awarded applications in round one um and we've got over half the pot left for the next round and obviously we have a, a much larger allocation for 24 25 just because the way defra has split up the funding so please don't panic about that um and then the next question can you apply with match funding being in the process of being applied for or does it need to be secured? Um, so that can be, you can be in the process of applying for that and um, for additional other match funding. Um, but obviously we won't release our grant until you've got all your match funding requirements in place. Would you agree with that, Kev and Nicole? Yes, that is correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, we'll get quite a lot now. Um, Oh no, they're all pretty similar about how much funding was left, but I can confirm there is still money in the pot for this round, the next one coming up on the 4th of December, and obviously we've got a larger um, allocation for next year, so please do get your applications in. If that is it from everyone, um, you can always email us either at grants at .uk or of course contact CAS um, and you will receive the slides with all their contact information on. But otherwise, we will end today's webinar. Thank you so much. I was just going to say, Kay, there was there was a, there's a question, and I wasn't sure whether it meant specifically businesses being funded in round one. Um, so I, I didn't know whether that was the emphasis or whether it was like oh, whether it was any applications were funded or businesses. So I don't think we did fund any businesses. They were community hubs, weren't they, in round one that we funded. So so but that that doesn't mean that they won't be funded in the future. It was just we didn't have any applications that 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 were were supported this time. So I don't know if that was what the person meant, but if they did, I just thought it was worth clarifying that. Brilliant. Thank you. And if, it can, if I can just add one thing, uh, now that with a new requirement of uh, um, applicants having to have contacted us before uh, applying, uh, just one thing to bear in mind, uh, it's much better to, instead of uh, filling out the application and then sending it to me, maybe saying, is this good? Uh, it's actually better to just get in touch with me as, you know, as early as possible uh, with just the idea and just a bit of background to your project. Uh, and then I think the application, if we need to work on it, the application is the last stage with writing the application, just so you don't you know, waste your time just typing and then you need to change things. So yeah, just get in touch with me as, as early as possible. You've got a few more now, Kay, as well. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's we'll start at the top again, sorry. Um, what information slash metrics do we need to continue to provide and how long for? Do you mean on a monitoring basis if you are approved, can I just ask, or if anyone's understood that differently to me on the panel? That's how I understood it, monitoring information and for how long. Yeah, so um, Kevin will to answer this as well. You do need to complete um, a monitoring kind of process when you, if you are awarded funding, um, and we ask for that at the end of your project. So you will provide an estimated end date and we will send you a monitoring report and you need provide kind of evidence of defrayal, so evidence of spend essentially as you put in your application and also what kind of impact that's actually had on you as an organisation and on your local community and also any images and we do ask for evidence against the outputs and outcomes you said in your application, hence Kev saying please do not overestimate yourselves just to look a bit better, please be realistic about it. Uh, next question. So for last round, will case studies be available to see successes of the fund? Nicole, I think that was something we'd considered. I'll maybe give that on to you. Yeah, we did talk about that. Um, we'd like to work with the successful applicants. Uh, I think, I mean, obviously they've been successful because they met the criteria. So we, we think it would be really good to give examples of the types of things that they've done. 
um, although we did draw on those to put together the slides um, that we've, we've we've pulled together. But yeah, I think it would be good once they've actually got underway and have um, done what they want to do. It'd be great to go back to them and, and talk to them about, you know, what impact that's had, what difference it's made to the local community. Thank you. Um, there is a question here about what licenses are required to export food products. I don't think that's a question probably any of us unfortunately can answer on this call, but if you contact the East Suffolk Food Safety Team, they will be able to answer that for you. Um, and we might be able to send out some useful kind of contacts actually when we send out the webinar um, slides from today, unless anyone else on the panel can answer that. But. And then finally, if you don't apply until later to finesse your case, would this would that penalise you in terms of funding available? Um, so obviously. We will the, as the rounds go by, less and less funding um, will be available. However, I think we've all the panel will always have in the back of their minds about future funding rounds and we wouldn't allocate all of our funding in one round, for example. And as I said, there is a much larger allocation for 24, 25. So hopefully it will go quite a long way. Kevin, Joe or Nicole, I don't know if you've got anything to add to that, but. Yeah, I think I would just add that um, if I was you, I'd be talking to Kaz now. Mm. I wouldn't be worrying about trying to finesse it now. I would, as Hayda said, if you've got an idea, have a conversation with them early doors. Um, so that would be my advice to you uh, on that one. Yeah, I would reiterate that. I think the key thing is to have that conversation. I think it will give you the confidence as well um, in terms of understanding what might be required and back up all the things that we've said today. So yeah, early doors, have that conversation, um, get get your ducks lined up, so to speak, ready to ensure that your application is as good as you can possibly make it. Brilliant, thank you, really good advice. So I think that's now the end of the questions, but if you do um, come up with any others post um, event, please just drop us an email or speak to CAD. So thank you so much for joining us today um, and we look forward to receiving your applications in the future. <laughs>